My name's Kira Lee and I'm Agent 27 at the Cosmic Intelligence Agency. And this is a very special New Moon in Pisces report for the Cosmic Intelligence Agency. And it's very special because this new moon happens to also be a solar eclipse, <laughs> which is, you know, a super powerful time, supercharged time of the year. And uh, I'm going to talk quite a bit about this solar eclipse in this talk and specifically talk about the degrees it's happening and how this might be affecting you and your natal chart. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, as always, as well, I'm going to um, zip around as fast as I can with some of the major aspects or planetary patterns happening at this solar eclipse and do my best to explain to you what it all means, i.e. what we're all kind of sitting with at this point in time in our lives and most importantly in our evolution because mm, that's what this is all aimed at you know all this talking is happening so I can help you and support you uh, grow evolve expand and hopefully uh, reach your potential so that's where all this is coming from all right then so let's begin this new moon in Pisces is happening at eight degrees of Pisces and it is part and parcel of a fabulous looking stellium of planets in Pisces. So first up, we have Mercury in Pisces at one degree. We have the South Node in Pisces at three degrees. We have the Sun and the Moon at eight degrees and Neptune at 11 degrees of Pisces. Now they are all conjunct. And then at a very wide conjunction to Neptune is Chiron at 23 degrees of Pisces. So we put all those planets together, call it a stellium. The midpoint happens to be eight degrees of Pisces anyway. So yes, yeah, super powerful positioning here at eight degrees of Pisces. Also, we have a uh, unusual um, aspect coming from this new moon in Pisces. And I'll just quickly show you it and I'll tie it in later about what it potentially means. And that's a sesqui quadrant out to Jupiter in Libra and a semi-square out to Eris in Aries. So that's happening and I'll come back to that. Uh, most importantly we have the ongoing T-square which I've been calling the making of the peaceful warrior. So that's a T-square happening behind all this action from Jupiter in Libra, uh, opposite Uranus and Eris in Aries and T-squaring out through Pluto in Capricorn. So I'll be focusing on all those uh, astrological happenings in this talk. So let's get on to it. <laughs> the solar eclipse. Oh my god. Okay, let's backtrack a bit. Two weeks ago at the full moon in Leo was a lunar eclipse. Now we're heading into a solar eclipse. So I'm filming this, you know, somewhere in between those two eclipses. And let me just say that somewhere in between those two eclipses is, uh, has been, is, is and has been, a very sensitive time for all of us so uh, don't be surprised if you've been a little bit feeling a little bit vulnerable a little bit raw a little bit sensitive needing to sort of make some buffering between you and others or you and the external world uh, I spoke to you about um, at the last uh, video report the full moon report I spoke to you how you could expect possibly to be triggered by something at the lunar eclipse something that would strike a chord at the level of the heart and bring something of a shadow quality of yourself into awareness and hopefully that shadow quality was highlighting an area for you where you could love yourself more because that's the work we're doing with shadow after all our shadow is the aspects of ourselves that we haven't learnt to love yet <laughs> and because it's shadowy it's unconscious quite often we're unaware of them or maybe we have an experience where we're sort of aware of it. It's swimming around a lot in our subconscious, but we haven't been able to completely grok it, you know, grab hold of it and consciously go, I got you. I know exactly what you're about now. And I know where the work lies for me from this point. So hopefully at the lunar eclipse, something like that occurred. We got a message, we had an insight, we had an aha moment around um, something to do with our shadow that brought us closer to our truth, brought us um, deeper into our heart, to a deeper place of self-love and integrity. So um, that being said, we probably all feel like we've got uh, major work assignments in front of us anyway at the level of the heart. But here comes the solar eclipse 
wow <laughs> if you read up online about solar eclipses you might hear all sorts of scary information about it it's a real darkening as the moon um, comes between the earth and the sun so it blocks the light so it feels quite shadowy and dark you might also read that it's quite an auspicious occasion to um, trigger major life events and life changes and I guess all of the above is true so what I want to share for you at this point is actually something quite personal, a personal experience that I've had of a solar eclipse to help you understand like the magnitude <laughs> of, um, of what a solar eclipse can be like. So um, back on November the 14th in 2012, wow, remember 2012 and building up to December 12, 2012. Well, for me, um, coming from the point of view of Western astrology, I wasn't that excited about December the 12th, I do admit it, but I was very excited about the solar eclipse that was happening just before it, which was on November the 14th of 2012. Also, because that solar eclipse happened to conjunct my birth sun as a Scorpio. So, um, what actually happened for me at that solar eclipse was really quite beautiful and amazing. I was happened to be at a seven day festival, solar eclipse festival, right up in the north of Australia in the desert. There was 15,000 people there and it was one of the most sublime experiences of my life. This whole party, the whole seven days of it was just pure perfection, pure bliss. And the actual morning of the uh, solar eclipse at 6.38 a.m. in the morning when the whole party was up uh, to witness the solar eclipse was just... Uh, magnificent and I'm floating around in this bliss state feeling like I've had a peak experience and uh, little did I know that all the details that followed afterwards were portending massive life changes for me so soon after the eclipse uh, like you know they say the solar eclipse the effects last up to six months well let me tell you in those six months it was like Carly came out of nowhere and just cut down every aspect of my life that was out of alignment with fully realizing that state of bliss as a permanent reality of my life. Mm. And it's interesting that as we come up to this solar eclipse, uh, this solar eclipse at 8 degrees of Pisces is trining back into my sun and this week I've had a reminder that woke me up to remember this last solar eclipse in November 14, 2012 that was on my sun and has brought me to the realization that five years later, hang on, 2017, yeah, five years later, I am just in a position to fully realize the gifting that I received at that solar eclipse to make that reality my permanent reality, okay? So I wanna share this story with you because it's got a, quite a few salient points that I wanna make. <laughs> One is that um, solar eclipses do portend great shifts, changes, transformations in your life. Two, there's nothing you need to do about it. <laughs> it's just gonna happen, okay? So it's just gonna find you. So you can just like be with the day. But three, as always, regard everything all the incy bits of details. Like I like to do this with every aspect of my life, pay attention to every second, every moment, as if all of it is meaningful and very helpful and instructive, you know. But especially on this day of the solar eclipse, I want you all to pay attention, you know, even maybe write extensively at the end of the day, all the events that occurred, all the, all the states of consciousness, all that you can remember about this day. Also, the following six months, yes, the following six months could see lots of changes that might feel like this dark, scary, shadowy world of Kali coming through and cutting through our illusions or breaking the ties from the things that do not serve us. So there can be big, startling shifts and the beginning of a lot of changes to come. But yes, on the upshot, I can see the um, coming into fruition place is five years later. So I want to say to you that we can see the effects of the solar eclipse for years to come. And the power of the solar eclipse can unfold, 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 unfold. Like any major um, healing ceremony we do, say we do a vision quest or something, and you can still be there 10 years later going, ah, wow, 
that amazing thing in my life that got started back there like and oh, keep having realizations of like whoa how potent and powerful was that time so this is how potent and powerful a solar eclipse is okay ah so that being said um i want to draw your attention into your own chart okay so the solar eclipse is happening at eight degrees of pisces as this is such a powerful event and I have an experience myself where um, it was separating from my sun by five degrees, I want to extend the orb of influence here, particularly for the conjunction, opposition, the square and the trine. I want you to look at from 10 degrees applying all the way up to 10 degrees separating. Now that's a whopper of an orb, but I feel like we need to work with this big orb for this solar eclipse because it's the sun, it's huge, it's magnificent, it's got huge magnitude, so let's open up the orbs. So tune in, do you have a personal planet, the sun, moon, mercury, Venus or Mars, within an orb range of 28 degrees of Aquarius to 18 degrees of Pisces, or in the opposite sign of Virgo, the squared signs of Sagittarius and Gemini, the trining signs, the water signs, Scorpio, Cancer, possibly the sextiles, Capricorn, and Taurus, so I'd make the orbs a little bit tighter for those. Mm. And if you do, <laughs> um, then expect changes, big changes, far-reaching changes to come and meet you at this time pertaining to the archetypal range or field of that personal planet. So if it's the sun, it's who you are, it's your identity, it's your life path, it's your vitality. Most importantly, it is your pathway to enlightenment. Mm. The moon affecting your heart, your feelings, your family, your home, your lineage, possibly past lives, you know. Mercury, your mind, your thinking, your communication, Venus, relationships, money, you know, self-love, things like this, Mars, action, the will, solar plexus, uh, sexuality, and uh, yeah, life purpose and direction as well. Mmm, exciting stuff. So let's get down to the nitty gritty of what's going on at this time with the solar eclipse. As I mentioned earlier, this solar eclipse, the sun and the moon happening in Pisces is part of a stellium, which is a grouping of planets, usually three, four or more planets. And we have Mercury in Pisces, conjunct the south node in Pisces, and the sun and the moon and Neptune together, all conjuncting around the south node in Pisces. We'll leave Chiron out for the minute. So this is very powerful in terms of us connecting into or being channeling even that's right because this solar eclipse is effortless <laughs> it's just happening <laughs> um, and it's providing an amazing uh, opening portal connection to our ancestry to the ancestors our personal ancestors and collective ancestors mercury is there with the south node in Pisces so we can expect to receive messages and uh, my sense of it quite beautiful messages from our ancestors, you know? So it's a really beautiful time to create an altar that is specifically dedicated to our ancestors, to honor the ancestors, and to sit in peace and stillness, like meditation with this altar, and open ourselves up to receiving. And the messages that come through Mercury and Pisces might not be specifically easily worded messages <laughs> and if they're worded they might come through a little bit more like riddles most importantly like poetry because poetry is so important right now and uh, also like imagery visionary dreamlike kind of messages on the topic of dreams wow I hope you're paying attention we are in high season of amazingly informative profound catalyzing dreams so such a great time to be keeping a dream diary or at least to be making the effort to have a dream buddy and talk and share about your dreams they're so rich right now and they always are but really right now so important and the Sun and the moon there so something in terms of us reliving realizing uh, aspects of our ancestry aspects of our karma and the beautiful thing about it is, you know, we 
we as individual souls, as, as individual as we can get, we intersect with our family karma, you know, because it's the perfect karma we need to um, experience what we need to experience so that we can meet ourselves and evolve ourselves on the spiritual path. At the same time, it's our own personal karma because uh, we need to work through the consequences of our actions in terms of our soul journey. And uh, so everything's set up perfectly for us to meet ourselves and our personal karma whilst intersecting with our family karma. Though for our family karma, we bring to bear our personal resources to meet similar recurring themes that are constantly looking for evolution. So this is where we find ourselves at the solar eclipse. So uh, don't be surprised if events unfold, and I'll get up to it, but quite sudden events unfold, and uh, we find ourselves in a position where we really need to make a response to something. So know that we are reliving so that we might realize, you know, the family line and realize ourselves in it. Mm -hmm. So that all sounds a little bit like diffuse, but uh, that's Pisces. <laughs> but what I'm trying to share with you is that there is a lot more at play um, in the events as they're unfolding at this time than we could possibly imagine consciously or that might make sense to us at this point. Uh, making sense of things will come later, but for now just uh, keep in mind that yeah, there's more at play than meets the eye. Yes, collective energies. Um, also, I mean, we've been working on this for ages anyway at this level, but you know, just more. Uh, also Chiron's there in Pisces. So this is a time of healing, of course. All of this is about healing as well as growth and uh, healing the past in order, like healing our karma in order to make our Dharma to move forward, to progress. And, um, working at the level of the heart, working at the level of true heart consciousness. You know, this is about universal love, divine love. And I've spoken to you about this in previous videos. So this is our capacity to channel pure light and pure love through all our channels, all our meridians, all our nadis, and finding that as this light is moving through us, as this beautiful divine universal love is moving through us, it's also coming across uh, impurities, darkness, energies, entities, all sorts of things that are triggering all sorts of uh, experiences for us that require us to cleanse, to purify ourselves. So we might be experiencing a number of ups and downs because <laughs> this energy is quite blissful and amazing when it's, when it's moving, when it's flowing, but when it comes across a blockage or a impurity or something, it can start to feel very heavy or overwhelming. We can become very sensitive and things like that. Now that is our call to stop, <laughs> go into retreat and do some purifications. I've been working uh, with you for weeks and encouraging you to work with the element of fire and there's a lot of fire around all the planets in Aries and to purify but we are also been working for the last year and a half to purify our channels with the water element as well so yeah we've been doing all of this also with uh, Virgo on the north node we are practicing the art of discernment we are sifting through <laughs> All the influences that are in our life, uh, all the people, all the relationships, all the, you know, all the stories that are there, just sifting, 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 just to get to the purest, most uh, helpful and aligned with our highest evolution stuff and holding on to that and <coughs> away the rest of it. So, um, yes, so back at this Piscean level, uh, Chiron in Pisces, doing lots of cleansing, uh, doing lots of healing on ourselves and uh, coming to a place of love within. And uh, this is such a beautiful time. It's a peak season <laughs> full of revelations through our divine shadow to teach us where we are not loving ourselves fully <laughs> so that we might. <laughs> That's the work, and it's beautiful, amazing, blissful, enchanting work that we do here with ourselves. And as we do this, as we excavate all the, let's call it impurities for now, out of ourselves, all the blockages, the things that are blocking us from loving ourselves and all being unconditionally, as we do that work, we start to feel more and more elevated within ourselves, more and more in love with all being, and start to realize that this is it. 
to become a clear channel for love. Okay, I'll leave that there, but I'm going to come back to this in terms of how to put this into action in the world of things and stuff that's going on right now. <laughs> so that's our stellium in Pisces happening around this solar eclipse. So um, I expect that we will be triggered by events at this time on a personal level that are uh, there to support us ultimately come to a place of greater realization of self of truth and of divine universal love yay um, <laughs> and if you go back to I said how that was affecting your chart personally like tie all that in if you can synthesize all of that okay next up I'm uh, back <laughs> there was just such a huge break in the process here while the skies opened up and it poured down with rain which is a very Pisces in stellium style thing to do and of course now the rain stopped the sun is out and suddenly it is so hot and humid and all that water's coming out through the skin as perspiration so this is potentially very interesting as I was uh, segueing out of talking about all those planets in water and about to talk about the planets in fire maybe this is part of the solar eclipse energies that the water is coming to rain on our parade but then the fire the sun comes out and it's suddenly whoosh, all the emotion all the feeling comes through it's very passionate and fiery directed activity and action <laughs> so on to the ongoing t-square so it's ongoing because it got started in October last year 2016 and will be with us this till April this year 2017 and I am calling it the making of the peaceful warrior so what's interesting at this solar eclipse new moon is that warrior archetype planet Mars is in its home sign of Aries and has come to conjunct Uranus and Eris in Aries which is just adding so much dynamite <laughs> to this end of the T-square Woohoo! And it's the solar eclipse. So the potential for some action to happen in the world, some, mm, I don't know the exact flavor of the action. Let's just call it action at the moment. Potent, powerful, catalyzing, transformative action to happen that will eclipse all of our attention because it will strike out the world soul the potential for something like that is running high. The exact nature of that, I'm not sure. You know, we are in uh, peak season of working with shadowy qualities within ourselves, within our societies as well. So that's a reflection of what's happening in the microcosm and the macrocosm, seeing the impurities come up to the surface and doing our best to work as consciously with those to take a stand, to be strong warriors, when we see corruption or we see things that are not right, but at the same time, some people are, are getting really lost in this energy and just getting caught up in conflicts and, and bickering and problems and wars and dramas. So it's like, mm, come back to the liberal end, <laughs> please. <laughs> Get some distance and detachment from what's going on, please, warriors. It's so important that if you are to engage in warriorship, you do it from a place of detachment, okay? To work with those passions but then find a way to ground them and settle them as well and to move into a place of warriorship with a cool calm clear detached mind and heart and uh, see the best way through based on the best strategy through please thank you <laughs> of course I say this I've got Mars Uranus conjunction in Libra opposite Mars Uranus conjunction happening in Aries at this new moon solar eclipse so i'm calling for cool heads to prevail and for yeah definitely to work with uh, detachment as well as empathy so what's interesting too is like back in october 19th 2016 mars was conjunct pluto in capricorn and now it's coming up to meet uranus and uh, i remember speaking at the beginning of a journey of many ceremonies that i was about to participate in fire ceremonies with the grandfather 
and I spoke at the beginning of this saying that these fire ceremonies were going to bring up all the impurities, particularly in our relationships. Mm. And uh, that's of course what happened. <laughs> and so begun the process. And we've been in this process for many, 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 many months of the shadow, shadowy materials coming up, like I said, at the level of microcosm and macrocosm. But unfortunately in that space, there was you know, significant players who were not able to detach and really got caught up in their insecurities rather than acknowledging their impurities and use that as a um, reason to attack others where they uh, perceived injustices and attacks coming towards them that didn't exist. And this is what happens with a mind that's mired in delusion that's all based in a lack of self-love. So all these themes are tying in together. Let me round it up really simply for you folks. It's a really clear message at this time of the solar eclipse to check your head, to check your heart, to check in on yourself before you take action. Is this coming from a place of love for yourself and for all beings? Or is it coming from a place of fear? Are your actions lower level, lower dimension, bickering, fighting, warring, gossiping, manipulating, controlling at this level? Or are your actions coming from a place of unconditional love for all beings? Are you able to take a stand as a warrior to engage in this universal archetype of the battle of the war, just like Arjuna needed to in the Bhagavad Gita? Are you able to do this from a place of detachment and love and empathy? Or is it coming from a much lower dimension within yourself? So these are huge themes up, you know. Um, another thing that I would recommend too is um, like from stuff that I've been observing is a lot of people are allowing themselves to become really distracted by bickering and fighting and conflict and war and getting really caught up in this dream of us versus them or me versus him or blah 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 and it is blah 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 because it's not the truth I spoke last week saying that we are of one universal order we are part of the perfection of all being our job is to get curious <laughs> from a place of neutrality of what is happening around us and to make a wise assessment around how to engage coming from a place of love not to just endlessly get caught up in the no 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 this is part and parcel of that odd kind of aspect I spoke about at the beginning which is the um, new moon sesquisquaring Jupiter in Libra and making a semi squared to Eris in Aries so the potential here between the um, need to stand up and cause strife versus our capacity to be peaceful and to negotiate peaceful actions like it's not going to be easy it's going to be really quite challenging of how we meet the potential conflicts in our life at this solar eclipse but please keep in mind all these ongoing lessons and yeah that simple decision rule does this resonate at the level of the heart chakra because if it doesn't hold on go back into retreat go a bit deeper into your self-inquiry and find out more about why you're being triggered at this level mm. get more curious about that and uh, work through that potentially this is just another impurity coming up probably more the case that this is it and you can just go back to your altar and burn 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 and use your consciousness to um, our spirit you know to return this energy probably coming up from an ancestral level moving through your channels to be returned back into the cosmos and reintegrated as pure light, you know? Just allow the impurities to come up and resist the need to take it out on others, particularly those that are far more likely to be your allies. <laughs> and take care of one another, you know? There's this kind of ghost point to this T-square, which is over there in Cancer. And uh, this, is, this is the ghost point, this is the, the missing element, the divine mother, the divine love, you know. Allow that ray of light to come through 
at this time. Okay, so I'm going to round up from here. It's uh, been wonderful talking to you as always. Um, if you are interested in an astrology reading, please contact me here on my email address or you can find me on Facebook at Curly Cosmic Space Priestess. And that's also the name of my YouTube channel where you'll find not just my new moon reports but also my full moon reports. Until I see you next time in two weeks, ciao for now.